In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and program a Harmony 650 remote. Coming up right now. Hey everybody, Rudy here from Take a Bath Productions with another video to hopefully make your life just a little bit easier. Today we're going to be programming this Harmony 650. I'm going to show you how to get the software and program your remote. All right, let's get started. All right, guys, welcome to my desktop. The first thing you're going to want to do is download the software. Otherwise, the remote's going to be useless. So come over here to this website. We got uh, setup.myharmony.com. And scroll down here to the software, get the software, and then just download it and follow the instructions uh, for the software and it's kind of self uh, self-explanatory on that then once you get the software go ahead and open it up and get into it and you're gonna wanna add some devices um, I recommend you go around your house and write down the devices or even if you can bring your cell phone and snap a picture of them of the model numbers sometimes the model number is in the back uh, I don't really like this feature because sometimes these devices are in a cubby hole and they're kinda hard to get to to get to the back so that's a little bit of a pain you know other remotes say uh, say okay Samsung TV we've got 12 possible codes and just try the codes that's how those work uh, but on this one, you're going to have to have the model number because it wants it specifically. All right, so we're on uh, devices right here. So we're going to add some devices real quick. We're working with a Samsung. And sometimes you can put in a partial model number like that, and then it'll ask you, uh, which one I've got? I've got a 550 1F. So we're going to go ahead with that. All right. This will uh, take up to eight devices. Um, I don't know why. There's a lot of uh, different information on this thing. It only takes five devices, but I tried it and it takes all eight. So we're going to go with eight. We got an Apple TV. We're not going to add eight devices right now because uh, I'm just trying to demonstrate how to do this. And we're going to add a audio receiver. DB, uh, DVD player. and a dish DVR. Uh, one thing you should know about the uh, the dish, uh, some in some cases, uh, unless you're programming this for the main uh, room where the dish uh, receiver is actually located at, it's not going to work. If you're trying to use this on a satellite location in one of your other rooms in your house, um, the dish network sends the signal through the house and you know you can pick it up in another room and then the remote for the dish is UHF well this remote doesn't have UHF capability so it's not going to work it's only infrared uh, so that's something that uh, you might want to consider if that doesn't work for you then take it back one other thing to mention this is saying that the original uh, remote address is defaulted at number one and apparently there's no way to set it. Now in most cases this is going to work uh, but if it doesn't work push, uh, push the sysinfo button on your uh, front of your dish receiver and it'll display what the remote address is for the primary remote. 
Uh, mine was set at three, and I followed these instructions, and it didn't work. Uh, so I had to um, figure out how to reset it to number one uh, to get this to work. So that's another thing to keep in mind. If the remote doesn't work, it's probably because the dish, uh, uh, the remote address is not on number one. All right, well, there's my devices. Uh, so let's put some activities in here. We're going to go with uh, Watch TV. All right, Watch TV. You can rename it to whatever you want, but we're going to keep it that way, Watch TV. And this is, uh, this is what it thinks you're going to use, you know, if uh, on this activity. Um, You've got the uh, Pioneer and the DVR and the TV, of course. Uh, so we're going to take off the Pioneer receiver because I actually don't have that hooked up to my TV. Um, but I, I could leave it on there if, if you guys have a receiver or a sound bar. I'm sure it'll work with that, too. Uh, we change the channels with the DVR. Yep. The volume is going to be the TV, of course, because we uh, took out the receiver. And the inputs uh, to watch the TV. Yeah, you're going to want to write that down, too. What inputs go to what and what not. So in this case, we're on HDMI 2. All right, please confirm. Controls volume, HDMI 2, blah, blah, blah. And done. All right, let's try another activity. How about uh, watch Apple TV? Now, uh, when you uh, work your remote, there's a button at the top. Watch a movie right here. Uh, that's going to be your watch Apple TV. Apple TV and once again we're taking out the Pioneer receiver this one is on HDMI 1 all right that's done that's so you got the idea you can add an activity here we're gonna listen to music all right all right now, uh, in this case, we're just going to use the, uh, the Pioneer receiver. Took out the DVD. And this will just uh, be like a default. If you just want to listen to the radio, you could set it to tuner. And when you hit the power button, it'll come on to tuner. Next. That's it. All right, that's enough on the activity. We got three activities going there just to give you the idea. Yours is going to be customized differently, of course. Now to the buttons. Um, yeah, you can uh, you can customize any one of these buttons down here to do basically whatever you want. Uh, this one up here is uh, controls your screen, how that's going to work out, and then down here it's these buttons down here. So let's just for example. Uh, let's come down here to our dish DVR and customize that. Uh, now this is kind of a neat feature. Um, you can take any one of these commands and assign it to any one of these buttons that you want to. Uh, just for example, we can we can take this sysinfo if we wanted it and put it here on the red button. Just grab it and drag it over there. See, now it says uh, uh, command assign system info and these are not assigned to anything yet. But yeah, you get the idea. You can you can move this uh, anywhere you want. Uh, just, it just is, this is just for example if your original remote has a feature on it that this doesn't have a button for, uh, you can take these commands and um, get that feature on there. Of course, you'll have to remember what the red button does. Uh, that's the only drawback to that. All right, yeah, you can do that with any of the uh, any of the other um, Pioneer receiver. Just for example here, 
we can toggle on and off the power with the red button. Okay, like that. And now it's uh, now that's on power toggle. Uh, but one thing to know, if you're in a, in the activity mode, say if you're in the listen to music mode, this won't work. You have to select devices here and then hit the pioneer receiver and get into the device by itself. And then these little tricks that you're doing here is going to work. But I, I tested it, and it seemed like when you were in the activity mode, uh, uh, that wasn't going to work. So that's something to, uh, to remember also. And you can program fav favorite channels. Dish DVR, set up some channels. You can add up to 23 channels. Let's just say channel 9, CBS. Uh, down here, you can select an icon if you want to. Um, well, let's see. Select an icon. Browse. Uh, how about if we use the all-seeing eye for uh, CBS? And there you go. You can select that. Add a channel. Channel 7. And just label. Add a channel. Channel 5. All right. Now one thing that's kind of cool, you can move these around any order you want them to be. And of course this is page one, but if you had 23 of these icons or uh, memories programmed, programmed into here, you're going to have to scroll through and find, um, you know, up into how many ever pages you, you extend that out. So that's pretty straightforward, pretty cool feature. All right, well that's just an overview of the uh, features of this remote. There's a lot more features to it. Uh, I could go on and on about it, but it would just drag it out to the point of boredom if I haven't done that already. And um, well, last but not least, you're going to want to sync the remote. You're going to, of course, want to have the uh, USB port plugged into your computer when you're doing this. And if it doesn't take or if it doesn't seem like it's working, try a different USB port. I had to do that on mine. I plugged it into one and it didn't do a thing, so I moved it and it uh, worked. Uh, also, you're going to want to try to avoid plugging that into a USB hub. That's also uh, possibly going to be a problem. All right, guys, if you like this video, uh, click on that thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I come out with various kinds of videos as often as I can. Thanks for watching.